We hope you are enjoying and benefiting from the Bayana podcasts. To access hundreds of hours of exclusive Quran and Arabic video content by Ustad Nu'man Ali Khan, please sign up now at www.bayana.tv. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Khaliq al Wujudi min al Adam, Waja'il al Nuri min al Zulam, Wamukhrij al Sabri min al Alam. وملقي التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم فالحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له وأنيبوا إلى ربكم وأسلموا له من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب ثم لا تنصرون واتبعوا أحسن ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم من قبل أن يأتيكم العذاب بغتة وأنتم لا تشعرون رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين As we approach the conclusion of this incredible month All of us are wondering if our ibadat, the worship, is good enough and that Allah will excuse the laziness that we had in our prayers and in getting up in the morning and really paying attention and making the dua that we were supposed to make. There are feelings of accomplishment and at the same time there are feelings of regret that we didn't make the most use of our time. And every one of us has those feelings. Nobody's above anybody else in this and only Allah knows where we stand. So our appearances and the fact that I'm standing here and talking to you and you're sitting in the audience listening to me doesn't put me in a better position than you. All of us stand in the same place in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is something that we all have to be concerned about. But at the same time, we have something in our deen that is unique that I want to share with you as we are get, saying goodbye to this month that I, I think is of paramount importance. And that is our understanding of forgiveness. One of the great incentives of this month is that every single day of this month is an incentive to earn Allah's forgiveness and have a fresh start in our life. That is one of the great incentives, one of the great gifts of this month. And every Muslim is supposed to be cognizant of the fact, especially in these last few days, that every single one of these days may be the day that your, your slate will be wiped clean, my slate will be wiped clean, all of the bad that we may have done is no longer counted and we get to have a fresh start. We are as good as someone who was just born. We are just as good if we can take advantage of these few days that are left and especially these few nights that are left. We're supposed to have that attitude. But at the same time, at the same time, the Qur'an is full of descriptions of people that get punished. Qur'an is full of descriptions of Jahannam. Qur'an is full of descriptions of people that are corrupt, that whose good deeds aren't accepted, you know, 
their, their deeds get seized on Judgment Day, who stand up on Judgment Day, and they're even in shock. There are Muslims that are talked about on Judgment Day in Surah Al-Hadid that are in shock because they were standing in the company of believers, walking towards Jannah, and all of a sudden a wall got dropped. And they say, Alam nakum ma'akum, weren't we with you guys? We're supposed to be together. And they say, no, 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 you're not with us. They, the people that are heading towards Jannah say, وَلَكِنَّكُمْ uh, فَتَنْتُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِ حَتَّى جَاءَ أُمْرُ اللَّهِ وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورِ That's an incredibly scary ayat. The people who are on the other side of the wall walking to Jannah say, yeah, you used to be with us, but you put yourselves in fitna. You didn't take, take the deen serious. وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ And you used to put things off. You used to say, I will change, I'll get out of the haram business, I'll stop doing this bad thing that I'm doing, I'll start taking prayer more seriously, but you kept putting it off afterwards, afterwards. Let's, let me just have a little bit more fun when the summer's over, then I'll, I'll get serious. After, you know, after this comes, after my kids get married, then I'll get out of the haram business. Whatever it may be, whatever excuse you had, you kept putting it off. Those people say to the people in the back, yeah, we prayed together, we used to live in the same neighborhood. We said salam to each other. We hugged each other at Eid even. But you know, you put yourselves in fitna. وَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ حَتَّى جَاءَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ وَغَرَّتْكُمُ الْأَمَانِ First of all, and your false hopes deluded you. Your false hopes deluded you. They, they deceived you. What does that mean? You thought that after all the stuff that you're doing, and you make a little bit of dua on the side or some prayers on the side, is good enough. And you thought you, you're just gonna walk into Jannah. Like Allah says, Am hasibtum an tadkhulul Jannah. You, you assumed you're gonna walk right into Jannah. You got deluded by that kind of thinking. Hatta ja'a amrullah until the decision of Allah came. Wa gharrakum billahi al gharur. And the, the one who is really good at deceiving did a number on you. He, he deceived you good. You were completely confident that Jannah is guaranteed to you. Those are the ayat that are also there in the Qur'an and they're pretty scary. So when we're in this month of seeking Allah's forgiveness, how, are we, how do we become people that aren't delusional? How do we know for sure that we're heading in the right direction, that we're actually seeking Allah's forgiveness? And on the one hand, if you read those kinds of ayat only, you'll become completely depressed, like nothing I do is good enough. I don't know if I'm on the right side of the wall or the wrong side of the wall on judgment day. I don't know if my forgiveness is genuine or artificial, I don't know. So how am I supposed to know? One of the places in the Qur'an that so many ulama have talked about, so many great thinkers of, of the Qur'an, mutadabbirin of the Qur'an have talked about, that say that the subject matter of earning Allah's forgiveness is comprehensively covered. The entire philosophy of forgiveness of Islam is comprehensively covered in one place, it's Surah Al-Zumr, the 39th Surah. And I want to share some things from that for myself and for all of you. Like I said in the beginning of this khutbah, this is for all of us. Just because I'm the one sharing these ayat with you doesn't mean I'm above it and I've already been guaranteed something that you haven't. We're all in the same place. Allah Azza wa Jal talks about those who speak on behalf of Islam. And He says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who could be better in speech than someone who calls people to Allah and does good deeds himself. In other words, he's not above action himself. He can't just be all talk. He has to take action himself. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And he openly declares, I'm among the Muslims. Which means two things. One, that he's proud to be Muslim. And two, that he doesn't consider himself above other Muslims. That he considers himself, you know, so we're all in this together, folks. All of us are in this together. Nobody's in a higher position than anybody else before Allah Azza wa in, in this world at least, and only Allah will know where we stand on Judgment Day. And Allah knows now too where, where our hearts stand. So this passage that I want to share with you begins with hope. And that's important because our deen begins with hope. It doesn't begin with threats. It doesn't begin with warning. Even though my khutbah did, because a lot of you, like the predominant message that you have been exposed to since childhood is that Islam is full of threats. That our deen is full of threats. You do this and Allah will get you. From childhood, your parents might be telling you, if you do haram, Allah is going to punish you for that. And there's punishment of this and that kind of punishment in Jahannam and that kind of punishment in Jahannam. Where does this begin? Qul. The messenger is told to say, قُلْ You tell them. And this قُلْ is really important too. Because it was critical for Muslims to hear the message of hope from their messenger wasallam. And carrying on that sunnah, we don't just get hope from the book. We get hope from those who carry on the legacy of the messenger wasallam. You and I, carriers of that legacy, are supposed to be people that give other people hope. That's carried inside that قُلْ قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ 
say to them, my slaves, my, my servants, my slaves that have gone against themselves. Israf in Arabic means to cross the border, to go beyond what you should have. If you eat too much and you're, you feel like the food is up to your throat, you've got Israf in eating. You ate too much. If you spend too much on something that you shouldn't have spent too much on, you've done Israf in spending. If you take revenge, somebody slapped you, you slapped them 10 times, you've done Israf in taking revenge. Israf is to go overboard. Allah says, my slaves who have gone overboard against themselves, They've done things more than they should have in so many aspects. And Allah didn't say Israf in what? Is this Israf fil mal? Is this Israf fil kalam? Is this Israf in ghafla? What, what, what is this Israf in? What is this excess in? And Allah didn't highlight it because there are so many things we're excessive in. You could be excessively lazy, you could be excessively angry, you could be excessively greedy, you could be, you know, any number of things. Any number of things. And Allah says, any of you that have gone overboard, against their own selves. And that's the other thing. That's the irony of this ayah. Allah could have just said, Ya ibadi al the adnabu, the ones who've sinned. You know, the, those who irtakabu sayyiat, who've earned evil deeds. He said, asrafu ala anfusihim. What that suggests, israf is when someone wants more for themselves. And because you want more for yourself, you think that it's gonna give you some kind of gain. And Allah gives the reality of the ayah. He says, Asrafu ala anfusihim, not li anfusihim. He says, you've gone overboard against yourself, not for yourself. You were thinking that you went and you crossed the line because it was something for you. But the reality of it is, every time you did, it was against you. Ala anfusihim. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. If you've admitted to the fact, and I've admitted to the fact that we've gone overboard in some things, We've crossed the line in some things. Then Allah says, don't you cut hope off. Don't you know, this is shiddatul ya'is al-qunut. The shiddatul ya'is, extreme depression. Extreme depression. And what are we learning here? That uh, uh, sins, bad deeds, they make you depressed. They make you feel like, yeah, Allah's not going to forgive me now. I'm pretty messed up. You know, what's the point of even seeking forgiveness? If you know what I'm doing, you know the kind of stuff I'm up to? <laughs> you don't want to know, bro. I'm bad. And that, at that point, you just say, what's, what's even the point of seeking forgiveness? And Allah knows that that feeling comes with those kinds of evil deeds. And a person just says, I can't even worry about forgiveness anymore. I mean, the people who are good, they try to make istighfar and stuff. I've, I'm involved in way too much. And I don't see myself getting out anytime soon. Allah says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Don't cut yourselves off. Don't lose hope. Don't become completely depressed from the loving mercy and care of Allah. Allah didn't stop loving you. Allah didn't stop caring about you. Allah doesn't, is not no longer interested in showing you mercy. That's not the case. That is not the case. You start telling yourself, oh, Allah just wants to punish me, I guess. No, that's you. <laughs> Allah didn't say that. You said that. Allah never says in Quran, He wants to punish you. He says the opposite. مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ What's Allah gonna get out of punishing you? Why would He want to punish you? That's literally what He says. You know, one of the most incredible hadith I read recently, that completely changed my view on things. I shared this with you before too, that Allah has built all of us a home in Jannah. All of every human being, Muslim, non-Muslim, you name it. Every one of us has been built a home in Jannah, waiting for us, and a family waiting for us. And some have interpreted that family to mean He's guaranteed you and your family Jannah already. Just so some people don't want to go. Some people just don't want to go. And there's going to be a lot of empty properties in Jannah when people go. And Allah says about those properties, they will be given in inheritance to the believers. They're gonna be handed an inheritance to the believers for all those people who didn't want to enjoy this Jannah and their families. Allah says in Quran, الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ People who lost themselves and their families on Judgment Day. How do you lose your family on Judgment Day? Because the family was waiting. The family was there. A good life for you was there. So Allah Azza wa Jal says in these ayat, "Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jamia." Please listen to these ayat with open ears and take advantage of Ramadan. What's left for you, for yourself, for your fa for your family's sake? Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jamia. Allah will forgive all sins all together, and it's the miracle of Quran. One of the great gifts of Quran that Allah said dhunub and not said didn't say sayyat because sayyat are bigger sins. Dhunub are lesser than that. And if you, Allah says, He'll even cover the small ones, actually the negation of the lesser includes the negation of the bigger. Like if Allah said, Allah will forgive your big sins, that would mean that He will leave the small sins. He says, I'll even take care of your smallest sins. 
I will wipe your slate so clean there won't be even a little stain. Everything will be gone. Jami'an. All of them all together. Innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. No doubt about it. He he's the only one that is excessively forgiving. He's excessively forgiving. And he's always, always loving, always merciful, always caring. This is the first message that was supposed to be given about forgiveness. Allah is ready to forgive everything. Allah is ready to forgive everything. Allah is ready to start you for fresh, completely new. <coughs> but that is not the only thing. Someone just reads this ayah and thinks this is the message of the ayah. No, 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 no. Look, the, the awamir, the commandments continue. So the next ayah, the way to read it is, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ It's like that, it's ma'atuf. What that means is, my slaves, now that you know I will forgive everything, then come back to me, come back to your master. That's the part two of this message. The discussion on forgiveness is not done yet. Come back to him. He says, I'm ready to forgive you, but my forgiveness isn't free. You have to do something to earn it. Come back to me. Anibu ila rabbikum. Turn your hearts back to your master. You know, tawbah in Arabic can be literal too. Tawbah can be of the heart to turn back to Allah, but a physically a person turning back is also a form of tawbah. Inaba is only for the heart. The word inaba is used in Arabic when you, the heart turns back to Allah. So Allah says, where is your heart? What, what are you obsessed with? What are you so distracted by? Turn back to your master. He's ready to forgive you. وَأَسْلِمُ لَهُ And then he says, now that your heart has given up to me and has come back to me, then give yourselves up before him. Be in Islam, submit yourself. Be ready to obey. وَأَسْلِمُ لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Before punishment comes to you, then you won't be helped. Now Allah mentions punishment. So it's not like the ayat don't have punishment in them. They do. But where did they begin? They began with the offer, look, I'm ready to forgive everything. There is not going to be any punishment on you. But if you want it, you better turn back to me. And you better give yourself up before me. And you better do this quick. You better not think you have time. You better not be from the kinds of people that are told on judgment day, tarabbastum. You thought you had lots of time, so you could put it off. You know? It's, it's like the, in the, fi, fi ma'na ta'akhartum. Like you put it off, eh, more time heavy. Ranado, ranado. That sort of thing. Don't be like those people. Allah says, get to it min qabli. This min is called min at ta'jil. Right before punishment comes to you. I am telling you the punishment is not far. It is near. And if you're thinking of judgment day, some people think judgment day is so far away, right? Innahum yarawnahu ba'idan. They think it's so far away. Wa narahu qariban. Allah says, we see that it's close. But for each one of us, when are we gonna go? Are we even gonna see the day of Eid? Who knows? Who knows when we're leaving? Who knows what Allah has written for the, for the angel of death? Who knows if we're gonna make it to the parking lot? Who knows? None of us know that. And when we go, man mata faqad qamat qiyamatuhu. Whoever goes, whoever died, his qiyamah began. You don't have to wait for yawmul qiyamah, the day of resurrection, for your qiyamah. It's just a matter of a split second. And when the angel comes, he's not gonna say, oh, I'm sorry, you have a meeting at five o'clock? Let me come back. It's not gonna be like that. It's when we're gonna go, we're gonna go. And there's not gonna be any delaying. So Allah says, don't put this off. Don't put off your heart turning back to me and submitting yourself. By the way, the beauty of this in our religion is that if one decides that they're gonna turn back to Allah sitting in a khutbah, they haven't even done anything yet. They haven't actually physically changed anything about their lifestyle. They haven't changed anything about the way they earn their money or the way they behave. They just made an intention in their heart they're going to be a different person. And as they were leaving, or before they could even enjoy seeing their family again, Allah decides to take them, they are forgiven. They're clean. They came back to Allah. That's good enough. I used to know this man, subhanAllah, in, in, in New York City, there was a masjid, a very big masjid in Manhattan, 96th Street, one of the biggest masjid. And across from it is a really giant like apartment complex. And there's a Hindu man who lived there. And the masjid's been there for decades. And he used to go walk by and hear, because they give the adhan on the mic. So he used to hear this adhan and you know, listen to it all the time. 96 year old, came into masjid and said, I'm ready to be Muslim. 96 years old. Took the shahada, the next two, two days later he passed away. 96 years of shirk. 96 years of ghafla. But then he comes back to Allah, it's good enough. All of it is wiped clean. All of the evil deeds have been turned into good deeds for him. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. 
This is the mercy of Allah. This is the love of Allah for someone. <laughs> that before they go, Allah lets them come back to Him. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ This is not just a message for non-Muslims. It's for you and me. We have to come back to Allah. And it's not just for, you know, oh, you know, I'm talking to those who think, you know, who are really liberal or progressive or whatever. I'm not talking to the religious people in the audience. You know, the sisters with the hijabs and the brothers with the beards. No, no, no. This is all of us. You know, Allah is not going to look at our faces on Judgment Day. Allah is going to look at what's inside our hearts. Just because we look and we act, you know, in a way that looks more religious than somebody else, doesn't mean we're in a better position. That, that's known to Allah. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ وَاتَّبِعُوا The commandments continue. Those of you that were in sin, وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ It's so beautiful. Allah says, follow the best of what has been given to you. The best of what was sent down to you. What in the world does that mean? It means the Qur'an. There were revelations sent before. But the best of whatever has been sent to humanity is Allah's book. Nothing can be better than this. Why don't you follow it? Allah is telling us in this passage that the people who want to come back to Him, the road to come back to Him is His book and following it. And you can't follow a map that you don't understand. How do you follow a map and you don't know what the directions are? You and I have to have a direct relationship with this book. If you've been ignoring this book, then these ayat are for you. You and I want forgiveness, then we want a direct connection with the Qur'an. Recite it, try to understand what it's saying. Genuinely turn to Allah and say, Ya Allah, help me understand this book. I'm reading a translation I don't understand. Help me understand its explanation. Tell me what you, what you mean. Ya Allah, make learning Arabic easy for me so I can connect with your book. Allah will make it easy for you. It's not like he won't. This is an open invitation to all of humanity. He said he'll make it easy. He didn't. I, I can't make that easy for you. Allah can. وَلَقَدْ يَسْحَبْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلْذِكْرِ We made Quran easy, he says. And he didn't say لِلْعَرَب He made it easy for the Arabs. He made it easy for all humanity. That's his promise. Show him some, some genuine incentive, some motivation on your side, that you're ready, that you want to come back. And you'll see that the doors start opening from him. وَاتَّبِعُوا أَحْسَنَ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ Follow the best of what has been sent. Meaning, you could never have received a better message, better advice, better counsel than this book. When a Muslim has a direct relationship with this book, they always have someone to give them advice. They always have someone to, to put their heart at ease. You open up any page of Qur'an and start reading, reading you'll, find, you'll find ease and comfort. You start making salah with khushu and recite the words of Allah and you will find solutions that you didn't imagine. They'll come to you through the words of Allah. It's timeless and it's constantly applicable. There's one book that is always applicable. Literally. I mean, I, back in like college, I did an experiment with a friend of mine. I said, hey man, we keep saying Qur'an is guidance, let's do an experiment. Every time we have a problem, let's just open randomly a page of Qur'an and start reading. See if we find a solution. And we did this for like a couple of months. And subhanAllah, we share every day. Look, I found this. I had this problem, and this is the ayah I found. And I wasn't looking for it. I just I was reading Quran and just came out. And this was Allah's solution for me. You know? This was Allah's advice for me. SubhanAllah. It's a beautiful thing. This is what it's supposed to be. This is the best and most beautiful thing that could be could have been given to us. You know? Min qabli and Allah then says, What the ahsanama unzila ilikum rabbikum min qabli and yatiakum ala baghtatan. Wa antum la tashurun. Before punishment comes to you, all of a sudden, and you won't even realize. In other words, people who know about the word of Allah, and they still don't care to turn to it. Then punishment will come. Because they, they, Allah gave them the door, look, I want to forgive you, here's the book, take it. You don't take it, then you can't blame Allah after that. <laughs> so the next few ayat are about people who have misconceptions about forgiveness. This was the actual understanding of forgiveness. This is the road you're supposed to take. Allah is ready to forgive if you're ready to take steps back from your life of excess and your life of sin. You want to make a turn and come back to Him and follow the revelation that is the best of all revelation. You want to follow it, then the doors are open. Then you, you should be filled with hope. And may Allah make all of us worthy of His forgiveness. But the, on the other hand, then Allah says, if one punishment comes all of a sudden, and by the way, all of this was plural, 
the ayat were plural, you know what that means? That the community is being told to get their act together. That we're supposed to encourage each other to get closer to Allah. That we're not supposed to leave each other behind. But there's a day coming, and when that day comes, there will be no community. We will all be individuals, we will all be saying nafsi nafsi, myself, myself. We will know, there won't be any family together. You know, we travel together as a family, we get all in the car together. We go everywhere, we travel together. Not on that journey, everybody's traveling alone. You're not gonna be standing next to your family. It's not gonna be like that. And on that day, now the ayat are all singular. So the person says, These ayat are so relevant. Wallahi, I get some emails from people that have issues and I'm like, SubhanAllah, that's not a, this is not a problem that has changed for a millennium and a half. There will be a kind of person who says, Oh my God! Ya hasrata! The, the a at the, at, at the end, we couldn't even turn it into a ya, because a ya is closer to a smile. The guy, because of his karaha, and because of his, his huzn, he's not even supposed to able to pronounce the ya. Oh, what regret I have! What have I done? This is what he's saying, Ya hasrata! Ala ma farrattu fi jambillah! That I kept falling short of what I was expected to do in Allah's presence, in Allah's company. Let me help you understand what this is saying. Allah said in the beginning, you people keep doing excess, you people go, keep going overboard. And the only thing you do less than expected is what Allah wants you to do. That's called tafrit, to fall short of expectations. And this guy says, man, I kept falling short of my expectations. Right in Allah's company. And what does that mean, right in Allah's company? Fi jambillah. Quran says, wa sahibi bil jamb, the guy sitting next to you. Jamb is right in Allah's company. You were, you were close to a masjid. You used to come sit next to other Muslims, listen to advice from Allah's book. You used to listen to Quran being recited. You had family members that tried to give you advice. And all of them were giving you closeness to Allah. The closeness to Allah, first of all, Allah Himself is near. فَإِنِّي قريب. And second of all, those who reminded you of Allah, you kept pushing them off. Man, let me do what I'm doing, okay? Stop telling me what to do. Stop giving me, I don't need your advice. I'm good enough, I'm good. I don't need this sermon right here. This guy says, what have I done? How come I fell short? I could have done it. And then he gives the reason. Young people, please listen. He gives the reason why he fell short. He says, "What in kuntu lamina sakhirin. I used to be from the people that kid around. I thought all of it was a joke. I used to just, Psh, whatever. <laughs> that was my attitude towards advice. Literally, sakhir. I didn't care. You know, there are people who lose hope in Allah's forgiveness. This ayah goes a step further. It's telling us about people who don't even care about forgiveness. They think it's a joke. Forgiveness for what? Oh yeah, judgment day, yeah, sure. It wasn't even a serious thing for them. And the guy is standing on judgment day, screaming out, Ya Allah, how could I have taken this not seriously? Why was this a joke to me? And then the second category of person, أَوْ تَقُولْ لَوْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ هَدَانِي the second category of person says, Oh, if only Allah guided me. It's Allah, Allah in fact. If He guided me, lakuntu min al muttaqin I would have been from the people of taqwa. Allah decided it's, that I should be a party animal. Allah decided I shouldn't pray. Allah decided I should be lazy. Allah decided I should have an anger problem. It's not my fault, it's Allah's fault. That's what He's saying on Judgment Day too. He was a liar in this world and a liar in the next. You keep putting things on Allah, huh? Like it's Allah's fault? Like you, it's, you're not at fault? Subhanallah, you never do that for anybody else. Somebody cuts you off on the road, you say it's Allah's fault? Oh, that guy, he's, he, he doesn't know how to drive. He should be more responsible, he should get a ticket. Why you blame him and you don't blame yourself? You know? Somebody, you, you go to the grocery store and you, you know, you, uh, you're paying and the, guy, the, the cash register person doesn't give you your change back. They owe you $10 back, they don't give it back to you. Hey, where's my $10? She, she says to you, uh, that's Allah's fault. Allah decided you shouldn't get 10, you're not gonna, Excuse me, it's your fault. Give me my ten dollars. You would, you know how to make other people responsible for what they do, but when it comes to yourself, you say, no, no, no. Allah decided I should do bad things. Really, you hypocrite. This is how you're gonna be. This is the excuse you're gonna hide behind. And he's still saying it on judgment day. I would have been a muttaqi if Allah guided me. Allah decided not to guide me. This is all predestination. Or he, when he sees the punishment, he says, okay, 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 okay. Fine, it is my fault. I admit, when he sees the punishment. If you just give me a second chance, 
لو أن لي كرا if I had a second chance فأكون من المحسنين I would be from not just Muslim not just مؤمن I would be from the محسنين what is the definition of a محسن you worship Allah as though you can see him now that he sees punishment he goes I'll worship Allah as though I see the punishment I'll have إحسان I'm ready يا الله just send me back I'm gonna be so good I'm just ready to change now just just one more chance you know you're a Rahman you you give me a chance. These are the people that talk. These are the excuses they make. Because they had false understandings of what it means to be forgiven. And what is Allah's response to all of them as I conclude my khutbah? Bala. No, no, no. On the contrary. The first guy that says, Oh my God, I fell short. I'm so sorry. Yeah, your sorry is not good enough. The second guy that says, Oh, if Allah only guided me, I would have been okay. Allah says, Yeah, that's not going to fly here. Bala. Uh-uh. Ya Allah, if you just give me a second chance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be good this time. I got you. I, I'm going to take care of business this time. I'm going to take it very seriously. It's not going to be a joking matter to me now. Allah says, no. At that time is over. I gave you a message that I will forgive everything, and you didn't care. You kicked it to the curb. You spit at that invitation. You thought it was a joke. That's your fault. That's your fault. Allah says, Bala, qad ja'atka ayati. My ayat came to you. And it's the singular. You know what that means? The revelation came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran came to him, and through him it came to every one of you individually. Allah says, Ja'atka ayati, Ja'atka ayati, Ja'atka ayati. My ayat came to you, and to you, and to you, and to you. And it's not even atatka ayati. It says Ja'atka ayati. Ja'a means coming from a long distance. I sent my Quran from the seventh heaven. I sent it with a legion of angels to the final messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa who bled so you can recite Qur'an one day. People died so we can recite Qur'an one day. People sacrificed their lives so there one day will, people will be saying La ilaha illallah and be opening this book and reciting the Fatiha. Those ayat came to you, فَكَذَّبْتَ biha, And you thought all of them were a lie? You ignored them? وَاسْتَكْبَرْتَ And you were filled with arrogance? You were arrogant to my message and my book? You dare ignore that message that came to you from all that distance? This is who you were? No, وَكُنْتَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ You were a disbeliever all along. You could turn to Allah and cry that day all you want. This is the understanding of forgiveness. The ayat of Allah have come to all of us. This is the month we celebrate revelation. This is the month we get to say, Ya Allah, my ayat have come, the, uh, uh, your ayat have come to me, they've come to every one of us, and we are not going to be arrogant to them. We're not going to ignore them. We're going to take them seriously. Fix your relationship with the Qur'an this month, so that you can keep it going when this month is over. Be from the people, I pray I'm from those people, and you're from those people, that Allah makes it easier for us to get closer to the Qur'an. And it, it closer and, and as the days go by, and that laziness never hits us. And that we're able to instill this love of this gift that Allah gave to every single one of us, that we're able to instill this gift, and, a, and an awareness and an appreciation of that gift into our children. That we're supposed to give them that enthusiasm, that love. You know how, 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 how happy your child gets when you get them a video game? Have you seen the look on their face? Eid is coming, when we're gonna give them toys. Have you seen the look on their face, how screaming and excited they are? That's called farah in Arabic. Allah says about the Qur'an, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا Because of this Qur'an, they should be overwhelmed with happiness. Where is the happiness? Where is the happiness with the Qur'an? How are we people that Allah, the, the Messenger would call sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Ahl al-Qur'an, people of Qur'an. People of Qur'an, where is that? This is the time to fix it. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till tonight. Become people of the Qur'an. Become people that come closer to Allah and truly earn His forgiveness and take the invitation that He's offering. May Allah Azza wa Jal make all of us worthy of His forgiveness, His love and His mercy. May Allah Azza wa Jal enter all of us and our children and our, our parents and our ancestors into His paradise. May Allah Azza wa Jal forgive all the mistakes of all the Muslims and may Allah Azza wa Jal accept all of the fasting and all of the worship, even the ones with, that, were, that was full of mistakes and full of laziness, may Allah Azza wa accept all of it and make us of those that are standing in under His shade on Judgment Day. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr.